<laughs> Picture for a second a hidden world right below our feet, an uncharted abyss teeming with life, wonders, and horrors concealed from the prying eyes of all the lives that lives above <laughs> and the lives above. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. The concept of the hollow earth dates back to ancient civilizations with legends describing entrances to subterranean realms. But what if these tales hold some truth and there's a whole ecosystem right below our feet? Maybe. <laughs> what happened? I was doing everything I could to just be so expressive into the camera. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm focusing. Do I, it. I'll see you. Will today, nope, well today, we will explore the possibility that with ancient tales and an account that fueled this theory even more. Oh, what lies at the center of the earth? Well, sit back, relax, and put your tinfoil hats on as we take a journey to the murky depths of the hollow earth theory. So we're going squatching. We're going squatching, bitches. Welcome back. Don't touch my Sasquatch podcast. We are your delicious hosts. I am Josh. And I continue to be <laughs> delicious Lennon. <laughs> oh. yeah. Yeah, joke's on you. Every head I wear is lined with tinfoil. <laughs> I'm always strapped. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, yeah, I got nothing. That, that's how you keep your hair so beautiful. It's <laughs> 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 a boy. Uh, Lennon? Yeah, it's me. Do you have any history for this mystery? Small little bit of history. <laughs> okay. Just a wee bit. A well, tad bit. Throw it to you here. Ah, oh, got it. And it's a different color now, though. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Stay caffeinated, folks. Maybe. Stay caffeinated, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Can't say it too loud. <laughs> now my drink's all shook up. I'm all shook up. <laughs> Earth. 1942. <laughs> <laughs> This blue ball of water and rock floating through space is the magnificent place we call home mm. for now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to go from blue balls to red balls. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> kicked them. <laughs> this round planet is the home to over 8 billion humans today and some 8.7 million different species across the globe. That's it? Yeah. Eh, yeah. 8.7. There's a one because you got the Bigfoot. The cha cha and Bigfoot of, of <laughs> yeah. South New Brunswick. <laughs> Actually, did you know recently they uh, they found a new species of killer whale that they did, that went undiscovered? No, seriously. Yeah, that's dope. I can't remember what the hell it was called, but basically, it's uh, it it's eats a serial whales. killer whale. It eats whales. Really? Yeah, not its own kind, but yeah, other yeah. whales. That's fucking. Those I just guys thought are that was vicious. I thought that was interesting. That I thought is it was interesting that a uh, you know gigantic fucking whale went undiscovered for so long. Yet. Yeah, Bigfoot is. Don't want to say we told you guys so, but uh, <laughs> yeah. And then you got the ones that uh, I don't think they're the same ones that are you know destroying boats, sinking them, and eating. People. Those guys are. Fu- That's what I'm saying. <laughs> is dude, killer whales are gnarly fuckers. They used to like us, and now they're like, you know what? You guys suck. I'm gonna kill you. Viewing homework for all you folks. Yes, please. Um, the movie Nope, the documentary Blackfish. Oh, I've seen that. Dude, that shows like how brutal they can be. But as soon in as their that, defense, as soon as that fin goes down, all yeah. hope is lost. Yeah, well, yeah. That's, I think but, that's uh, their depression, right? Um, it's, exactly. no, it's a sign of their captivity. Okay, all right. It's yeah, it's a sign of their captivity. Um, but yeah, they're fucking intelligent, deadly yeah. fuckers. Yes, yeah, sir. Very wild. Anyway, killer whales. This concludes killer whale talk. We do, and we got to clean your wall off because I got a projector now that could fill this whole entire wall. Beautiful. That we could use for our Jamie. Beautiful. Just connect a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tablet or something to it. Oh, that'd be dope. I'm bringing it to the mountains, by the way. Oh, you are? Yeah, with the screen that comes in on Monday. Sweet. 100 inch screen. I'm going to fucking rock out, baby. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> you can be in there editing on that. <laughs> <laughs> Not uh, quite. Larger it's than a- life, Lennon. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I want for it. Just a picture of Lennon scrolling through. <laughs> <Side>. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I'm oh, sorry. Fuck, hey, it's a little tangent of Earth. That's beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. But cheers, Mike. <laughs> I'll catch it again. Just kidding. <laughs> While the flat earther morons have a difficult time, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, fucking morons, just get in there and call Earth's them out. Not, Earth's not flat. You fucking. <laughs> 
Well, they have a difficult. Oh shit! <laughs> That's a bleep. <laughs> That's a bleep. <laughs> Well, they have a difficult time making a case for their theory, there exists another larger conspiracy theory about our planet, and it is that of my next movie, I know. What the fuck did you say? <laughs> 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 That's what I said. Exactly. Yeah. It is that it might actually be hollow. Ah. If true, it would shake modern science, the modern science of what we know about... Ah. <laughs> it shook. Ah. <laughs> of what we know, not just about our planet, but others as well. All of the scientific <laughs> properties. Yeah, you're gonna be talking. All of a sudden, you're just gonna be moving. To the <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that, um, it actually wasn't the camera. The camera was the only thing that was true stationary on Earth. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that um, was that was a horrible placement by Josh. Sorry. It's all good. For, I'm gonna fix <laughs> yours too because yeah. you've shifted as well. <laughs> I think that one was from me shaking it. Ah, yeah, yeah. I placed you all the way to the right side of the screen here. Now you're back centered. Hey, baby. Hey. Go. <laughs> all, all the scientific properties of what gives us the ability to survive on this planet is based on modern science and the understanding of our planet. Yeah. But is it correct? No. Or yes. worse? I don't know. A lie? Well, let's unpack its origins in... Balls and wieners. Did not expect that. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to build a pyramid, paint some paintings, and start a revolution. Get ready for Lenin's History Corner. You can freak it for a second. What? Unmute us. <laughs> Nothing it was happened. like... <laughs> it was like... <laughs> ding! I was like, wow, that's pretty damn good. <laughs> I won't say that, even to please. Well, in most religions, it is widely believed that within the earth lies one form of the afterworld, usually the worst form. Hades. In some, yeah. Yeah. The Christians attribute this place as hell. Well, the Greeks knew it as the underworld, where you would be ushered via ferry across the River Styx by Chiron. Oh, so you go over a River Styx by a little ferry? Yeah. What kind of ferry are we talking? Talking about like a pixie? No, um, smaller than that. Like a tooth ferry. Oh, no, you get to ride a Tinkerbell. <laughs> <laughs> I'll ride a Tinkerbell. <laughs> Goddamn right, Tinkerbell. Come here, you little bitch. Goddamn right, Tinkerbell. <laughs> They just oh, call me Peter Pan. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, everyone. On my birth certificate, it was an apology note from to- Trojan. From what? My birth certificate is an apology note from Trojan. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's very good. Oh, In Hinduism, they mm-hmm. believe in a group of half-human, half-serpentine beings called... Reptilians. We're going to be very clear here. They're called the Nagas. Oh, hey, look. That sounds like what I was talking about. Too well. Uh, and N-A-G-A-S. Yeah. These yes. people. Nope. These See, beings. What? That's, that's what I had to do last. Remember yeah. I kept saying, Nagas. Naga. <laughs> yeah. We should stop saying it. <laughs> <laughs> These beings populate the netherworld below. And after being banished from the surface world by... After being banished by the surface from the surface world by their creator god. Jesus. They get like a shot. In the netherworld, the Nagas have a rich civilization of palaces and kingdoms from which they live. Stop saying that word, you racist prick. I'm trying. In 1692, astronomy... Columbus didn't sail the ocean blue. No, he was... I I (laughs) (laughs) need something to make a point here. Let me grab this empty phone case. (laughs) Get yours, too. It's another ad that we aren't sponsored by. I don't even know what it's called. In 1692, astronomer Edmund Haley of Haley's Comet legend, claimed the earth was hollow. So he was riding the Hades Comet. He's like, yeah! You guys look at that bitch that's hollow down there. <laughs> look at that ball down there. It's definitely hollow. I'm gonna call that Hades Comet after the motherfucker riding it. <laughs> <laughs> Just gonna send it. <laughs> he claimed the earth was hollow. Coming to this conclusion after examining the earth's magnetic field. Oh, what happened with the magnetic field? Well, <laughs> he claimed... <laughs> He claimed that it was shifting, something he believed could only be caused. I <laughs> killed him. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Oh, man. <laughs> he claimed that it was shifting. This <laughs> is something he believed. We are slowly moving to late night talk radio. <laughs> 
<laughs> Cue the saxophones and ladies slip off, <laughs> slip off your silk attire. <laughs> oh fuck! Keep your hands above your waist, though. <laughs> <laughs> he claimed that, <laughs> as I was saying, <laughs> yeah. Well, please. He claimed that the that it was shifting. Something he believed could only be caused by three inner shells. With their own magnetic poles throwing off the fields. Right. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> some might uh, some might attribute the notion that there exists a hidden world below our feet to Jules Verne, author of the popular 1864 classic A Journey. Twenty thousand leagues under the sea. Close. <laughs> I, I know. I know. I know. It's a joke. I got it. I know. I, I can never I know. tell your face. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like wait, what? <laughs> A journey to the center of the earth. Yeah. In the book, a German yeah. professor and his nephew, accompanied by an Icelandic guide. It's us. Yeah. <laughs> travel. We got to find an Icelandic guide. That's, travel via. That should be hard. No, it shouldn't be. Travel via volcanic tubes to a prehistoric world hidden within the center of our own. It's almost like magic school bus when they shrank down and went into the woman's vagina to learn an anatomy. No, that didn't happen. But, <laughs> You're right, it didn't. But you know what did happen? What's happening? Was they shrunk down mm -hmm. and then... They went into uh, the water and experienced, uh, or witnessed firsthand how um, salmon reproduce. And the male salmon shot a, a white milky cloud out from behind it, and they went through it. <laughs> really? That was a legitimate episode. Oh, I saw the episode where they went to space, and one of the kids died because he took his helmet off. Good fuck that kid. He's a <laughs> moron. <laughs> oh, Sweet magic kids. school bus. Things of nightmares. Ah, oh, Miss Frizzle. Hit him up. <laughs> <laughs> the book yeah <clears throat> back the, to the book yeah the book experienced a resurgent <laughs> with, with the 1959 movie adaptation as well as the 2008 as in 2008 with brendan Fraser. yeah and it's less popular 2012 sequel starring just michael kane <laughs> no i know the one with the rock which one was the michael kane one that one Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> throw some berries on my chest and pop, 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 pop. Peck, pack of love. Peck, pack of love. <laughs> Peck, pop of love. This was a large entry into the Victorian era subterranean fiction books of the time, mm -hmm. which might have been inspired by our next guest. For the most, Pete. I thought you were going to say something. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> For, the, For the most, Pete. <laughs> and the least, Pete. Uh, Pete. Now, what, repeat what you're going to say. How scotch is helpfully made. That's not how I meant to say. The fuck did you... <laughs> Let it have a stroke. Scotch is meant... Is, no. <laughs> oh, God, it's getting worse. <laughs> he did have a stroke. Uh, uh, did you smell toast, too? <laughs> For the most part, it is accepted that the hollow earth theory began with a man called Captain John Cleve Sims Jr. Holy name. <laughs> yeah. Captain John Cleve Slims Jr. <laughs> Close. <laughs> oh, Slim Jim Fortune. I didn't mean slim. I meant see you. Whatever. Cap Captain John Cleve Sims Jr. Yeah. Believed not in the Newtonian theory of the Earth, but in his own new theory, which presented the hollow Earth hypothesis. Oh. But who is this man? Captain John Cleve Sims Jr. <laughs> was born around around 1790. Not quite. Rec well, <laughs> record, <laughs> records are within, put it within a year. And on his birth certificate, it also was an apology note from George. <laughs> <a>, sorry. <laughs> it's a long name. <laughs> My bad. He was actually, a, come up with some weird shit, guys. I apologize yeah. for that. He was born in New Jersey, and he was named after his Revolutionary War hero uncle. And through his name, he was fast-tracked as he wished, fast-tracked as he wished, through, into the U.S. Army. Through his name. Because his uncle... Because it's so long. No. <laughs> his uncle had the same same name as him. He was named after him. It ah, was given Junior. Got it. His uncle was a Revolutionary War hero. Why didn't any of my family name kids after me? Well, you know... That was a loud drink. You'd be a great uncle if I had a kid oh. named it after you, so that wouldn't count. That'd be weird. It would be strange. <laughs> I really liked my uncle. <laughs> that was weirder. <laughs> Much weirder. <laughs> <laughs> it like a flock of seagulls. Uh, wow. wow. So he was wow, fast-tracked wow. into the U.S. Army as he had wished. 
He became a captain and fought in the War of 1812, where the British got their cheeks clapped again. Oh, kind of like a strip around a pole. <laughs> sure, you're not supposed to touch them. Okay, they want to make that very clear. They let me, though. Huh? I've never been to you a You get special club. privileges. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Neither have I. It's usually my dream, so of course I do. <laughs> let me more than just touch you. <laughs> no, what do you do? Uh, I asked them about their thoughts, hopes, and dreams. Thank you. All Take right, notes on it. Sure. <laughs> For an expose I'm writing called Strippers. Who are they? Strip down. <laughs> <laughs> Strippers, strip down. <laughs> strip. Oh. Ah! oh, I didn't realize you were everywhere. <laughs> I, got, I got pistol whipped down there. <laughs> okay. So, he became a captain of fought. Oh. Shortly following the end of the war, yeah. he moved him and his family to Newport, Kentucky where he would publish his works and spend his days lecturing on his ideas. Oh, guys, listen, I got another idea. <laughs> oh, Jesus, not again. We put a big-ass balloon on a basket, <laughs> and we fill it with air. Oh, Hot air. I don't like that idea. How about this? How about this, guys? Take two pieces of bread. Okay. Put them on the fire. Get them nice and toasty. All crispy. right. Crispy. All right. You throw some peanut butter on top. Already out. Yeah. And then... Some ain't your mamas. <laughs> Some ain't your mamas. <laughs> oh, shit. It was good. Mar- I can't think of the... Um... Schmuckas. <clears throat> nope. The... Austra- Sprockets! <laughs> <laughs> Australian nasty stuff. Oh, um, Vegemite. Thank you. Vegemite is what I was going with, but couldn't think of it, so ain't your mamas came and out. And I think in um, uh, the UK they have Bavril. That sounds disgusting. I think it's a beef paste. That that sounds <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> I could be wrong. But I'll give some of some beef paste. Do your own fact checking. I, I can't do everything for you. <laughs> but let's get something straight. Lennon straight. Damn straight. I'm married too. So what? stop texting him, ladies. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, yes, he was an educated man. This is the Captain John Clave Sims Jr. <laughs> well, we knew we were talking about you. Well... <laughs> Well, yes, he was an educated man. He was not a scientist, a fact that many over the centuries have used to dismiss his theories. Now, let's talk about his theory. His theory is as such. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. The Earth is actually only 800 miles thick on its surface. Okay? That's what she said. Yeah. That's a thick bitch. <laughs> 800 miles thick? Yeah. On the its surface. surface. The yeah, surface. Yeah, I just realized. You're welcome. The North and South Poles each have large openings present through them which allow for the passage between the inner and outer sections of the earth. Hey, you know what that sounds like? Big assholes. <laughs> I meant like my ex-girlfriend. Ah. I just like to say that every episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking good. Not, re- not really. Not really. Really. Once through, there is four inner layers of the earth. Mm. Each layer is akin to a donut, like a big ring with the tunnels passing through each of the centers, I was question marking on that huh. one um, because it wasn't fully explained a little bit, but in the next little bit, it might be that I found after writing that. <laughs> that was confusing. You're welcome. <laughs> he was very passionate about this his theory, mm-hmm. spreading the good word to every Sue Billy and Sally Jean. The Lord's work. The Lord's work. I, almost, I wrote it and then raced it. <laughs> he even had 500 copies of a pamphlet he made detailing his hypothesis. Fuck, he made a pamphlet. Yeah, sent out to various politicians and scientists in hopes that it may become accepted and looked into further. And the making of a pamphlet thing, I wanted to come back to that. That's the kind of thing that like serial killers and cultists do. <laughs> yeah, here's a pamphlet, guys. Yeah. That's it. That's all I had. Fantastic. Now, um, I have here a actual copy of something that he wrote. Okay. Um, I'm excited about this. It's kind of like the, uh, hey, hear ye, hear ye. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go. So he says, to all the world, I declare the earth is hollow and habitable within, containing a number of solid concentric spheres, one within the other, and that is, it is open at the poles 12 or 16 degrees, I pledge my life in support of this truth and am ready to explore the hollow if the world will support and aid me in the undertaking. Oh, Susanna. I'm going to get real close here. I don't have my glasses on. Oh. I have ready for the press a treaty, a, a treatise on the principles of matter wherein I will show proofs of the above positions account for various phenomena and disclose Dr. Darwin's golden secret. Ah, oh, hearie, hearie. 
And I ask 100 brave companions, well equipped, to start with from Siberia in the fall season <laughs> with, <laughs> with reindeer and sleighs. And on the ice of the frozen sea, I engage. We will find warm and rich land stocked with thrifty vegetables and animals, if not men, on reaching one degree northward of latitude 82. We will return in the succeeding spring. You know, he's not British, Lennon, but I stuck with it. You know, the other problem I have is, who the fuck is reading that pamphlet? That's a lot of words. Usually pamphlets are like quick. But the gist of it remains. Just hopefully that everyone absorbed that. Yeah. Well, you know, they're probably, if they're watching the, watching the video, <laughs> too busy watching Lennon go really close and Josh going, I got to move the camera. He didn't necessarily have to. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> yeah, you got it. <laughs> That's true. So it, you did a quote, so I'll probably have something in the background flipping through. I can. There's um. If you go to my notes, the actual page is on there. Yeah, I usually go to your notes and you have quotes, and I just copy paste. It's a picture of the actual page. Yeah, I usually go to your notes. <laughs> <laughs> he went on a public speaking tour to spread his word orally. Oh, <laughs> yeah, real world. Captain John Cleve Sims Jr. Live Tour 1823. Tickets are selling fast. Uh, and they're sold out. It's already gone. Sorry. They're gone. Sorry. Sorry about that. But as you may be surprised to hear, he actually did get some positive feedback. Of course. Any any psycho will get some pot. Look at People follow Manson. Hey, people like us. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> I did not. <laughs> what? Follow Manson. <laughs> you misinterpreted it. I said, uh-huh. hey, people like us. As oh. in they support us. Not Yeah, no. Well, when I said people follow Manson, yeah. people like us. <laughs> Welcome to the English <laughs> language, folks. <laughs> Fuckers. <laughs> so Captain John Cleves, Jim June, jump, and jump. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little smooth transition. <laughs> <laughs> so he did gather support. He gathered support from his believers for an expedition to the North Pole to seek out the entrance to, into the inner layers. The Cincinnati Theater in 1824 even held a fundraiser to help fund the expedition. That's a lot of funding. It is. Fun fact news alert. Whoa, big news. Uh, John Quincy Adams <laughs> even believed his theory. That's all right. Do you know who John Quincy Adams was? Yeah, he's a person. Great. Good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> I've heard of him. Uh, yeah, president of the United States. No, no, no. No, no. That's not. It's false. Son of the second president of the United States, but it's okay. By the time oh. of his... Abraham Lincoln? Yes, him. Got him. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> oh, uh, people probably think John, I'm stupid. And that's okay. You can think that. Jason. No. I'm thinking I'm getting confused with names now. What the f- my name is Josh. <laughs> that's all I need to know. <laughs> Josh and Captain John Cleveson Jr. By the time of his death. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that? I like karate <laughs> chop. <laughs> boom boom. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> yeah. By the time of his death, his family and he had moved to Hamilton, Ohio, mm-hmm. where his son erected a monument at his gravesite, which still stands today in his father's honor, adorned with the hollow earth carved atop of it and all. Oh. But his legend continued in 1838. <laughs> okay. It's two separate sentences. Okay. <laughs> but his legacy continued. In 1838, the United States actually did sponsor an expedition to the North Pole. Okay. But in more recent times, works have been published by authors who have extensive research into the subject and those that claim that there are openings hidden throughout the globe that will lead us into the hidden worlds below. These openings, some claim, are the source of the flying saucers we see in our skies. I've heard of this. Not from space, but from our very own same terrestrial origin. Atlantis? No. 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 Okay. Chlamydia? Yeah. <laughs> One such author. <laughs> Constipation? <laughs> We're doing a lot of C's here, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, be careful with that one. <laughs> <laughs> One such author is yeah. Raymond Bernard. I like him. And in 1964 or 1979, he wrote a book entitled The Hollow Earth, The Greatest Geographical Discovery in History Made by Admiral Richard E. Byrd in the Mysterious Land Beyond the Poles, The True Origin of the Flying Saucers. Could you make it any longer? Woo! That's a title. Yeah. 
in which many hollow earthers today cite this book as the evidence to substantiate their claims. Oh, we wrote a book, didn't we? Yeah. Don't touch my Sasquatch. The Field top. guide. <laughs> Field guide where Josh and Lennon talk about <laughs> episodes and things with topics. And, and it's the proof. <laughs> and here we go again with the. And the cover picture is just children looking at Praveen. <laughs> and then us in the background. <laughs> yeah. Praveen We're, sitting there strapped down with no, no, 15. Uh, uh, help me. It's it's like the Harry Potter um, newspapers where it's like a moving picture. So you got Praveen and them in the back, and then you pan to the front, and it's just us like in the front <laughs> driving, and then who's driving the car? And then we get into a massive accident. It's not good. That is a hell of a cover. You know, you should go buy it right now. It's uh, available everywhere. No, Harry Potter uh, newspapers are purchased. <laughs> there you go. A yeah. spokesperson, this is this is one of my favorite things. Okay, um, I'll shut up. One of the best things I've read. Um, a spokesperson for the publishing company of this book uh -huh. um, wrote in the book's foreword the following statement. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I will not enter into any correspondence regarding this book or the author. Whether you accept or reject this content of the book of this book is your privilege. No one cares. <laughs> No one cares? <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's a badass. Yeah, he's basically is like, I'm being, it's like he was being forced to do this, and he goes, I don't. There's a gun in my head. Care. <laughs> There's a gun in my head. Uh, someone help. Stop Send saying help. that on the airwaves, otherwise they're going to be on to me. <laughs> Anyways, back to you. Okay, a spokesperson. I said. Whoa, what happened? I don't know. So in <clears throat> his theory in the books, his claims are very similar to Sims. Captain John Cleve Sims oh, Jr., that is. Got it. His theory is as follows. Like Sims, the Earth's outer crust is only 800 miles thick. 100? 800 miles. Oh, okay, my bad. Yeah. In the North and South Poles, there are entrances, entrances into the inner Earth that span 1,400 miles across. All right. With smooth edges that a human or animal could theoretically enter. All right. Um, the way that in the article I read it, um, it was akin to... If an ant were to crest, uh, walk up a mug and crest over the edge of the mug okay. and continue walking gravitationally, you know, accurate. Even gotcha. though it's not gravity, they stick to it. But my point is, is the gravity for us would be, you know, okay. it's like we were literally to crest over and keep walking normal. That seems to be how gravity works. Apparently. <laughs> Sir. Apparently. He also claims that within the Hollow Earth, there exists a race of advanced beings which fly their UFOs out of the tunnels and roam the skies above. He also believed that early Eskimos may have originated from within the Earth as well. Oh, mama. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know. So that, hey, that was the appropriate response. <laughs> he claims that when pilots fly directly over the poles, their compasses go haywire due Woo! to them flying directly over the opening to the inner Earth and all the magnetic fields and shit drive mm -hmm. them crazy. Oh. Kind of like they do to my body. Oh. It is even believed that the Nazis travel to the inner earth through the Antarctic hole and develop tech and bases around the quote unquote eternal ice. I've heard this one. Yeah. Some more out there theories even claim that the inner earth is where Hitler made his escape to after fleeing the war, while we all know he actually went to Argentina. Absolutely. At the end of all of these different theories, the modern, generally accepted theory is that the earth is hollow. Oh. There is a central sun within the center to provide plants, animals, and a highly intelligent race of beings inside with the nutrients it needs or whatever. The sciencey shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there's a sun. The, it, 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 the, the fact is, is that most of these theories are just like, there's a sun there to provide it with what it needs because they don't, they don't know, they don't go in. Right. You know, and there's a sun there. I yeah. get it. Yeah. No. No. Oh. Ah, hit, shit. Ah, my crooked finger hit the mic. <laughs> so there's <clears throat> plants, animals, a uh, highly intelligent race of beings that live within, yeah. all accessible to us via massive tunnels at either pole of our world. Hmm. Within the Earth lies this thriving world filled with a habitable atmosphere, teeming with life both undiscovered and extinct, just out of our grasp. In the coming decades, as we continue to destroy our world and the poles melt, we may learn the truth. But oh, do we already we know? Don't. I don't know, do we? Have we already made the discovery almost a century ago? Probably not. Okay. But maybe. <laughs> I got it! I got it! <laughs> the story of Admiral Byrd's flight over the North Pole is a controversial one, to say the least. Great. As some people believe that he actually discovered an entrance to hollow Earth with a mythical, <laughs> mythical realm inside our planet. While others doubt that he even reached the pole at all. But who is Admiral Byrd? 
Uh, it's time, ladies and gentlemen, for Josh's History Corner. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, Richard Everlyn Bird Jr. was born on October 25th, 1888. Handsome name. It is. Evelyn? <laughs> Everlyn's his brutal name. Great. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> I love this. Middle name, not riddle name. All right. <laughs> ah. He was born in Winchester, Virginia, in January. Nope. Very close. Very close. (laughs) And take your turn. I I read one line down. Beautiful. To a Jewish family? Uh, No, no, no. (laughs) I read one line down. (laughs) Wow. I love it. Uh, And so in January of 1920, (laughs) he would... All right, whew, I'm going to start. That's fine. Richard Everlyn <laughs> Bird Jr. was born October 25th, 1888. Where name? <laughs> In West Virginia, Virginia is where he's born. <laughs> Not Winchester. <laughs> Damn it. In West was, Virginia, Virginia. <laughs> I love it. He was born in Winchester, Virginia, is what I'm trying to say. Great. In January of 1920. I've heard this one. <clears throat> in January of 1920. God damn it. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, let me collect myself. Yeah. In January of 1920, he would marry Marie Donaldson Ames, and the couple would have four children: one son, Richard Everlyn Bird the Third. Okay, that tracks. I just like Bird the Third. Sorry, <laughs> Bird is the word. Oh, what a, what a, what a. <laughs> and three daughters: Everlyn, Catherine, and Hel- Helen. He loves Everlyn for fuck's sakes. Yeah. His he, middle name. He loves his name. <laughs> his son's middle name. His daughter's first name. <laughs> Woo. On June 8, on June eighth, nineteen twelve, he graduated from the Naval Academy and was commissioned as an ensign. Which Naval Academy? Uh, there, just we're, there was like four of them. I just it's all good. It's all good. Fuck off. Uh, he was from a uh, Naval Academy and was commissioned an ensign, which is a rank in the military. All right, in the U.S. Navy. Yeah. He was assigned to the battleship USS Wyoming, where he would receive the Silver Life Saving Medal for twice jumping fully clothed into the Caribbean Sea to rescue a fellow sailor who had fallen overboard. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Sounds like a badass. It was two different times. I don't. It wasn't like the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a, he's a good dude. He is fully clothed. I love. Like, was he supposed to strip down? <laughs> yeah. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, don't I you're drowning. Just but I don't want to get wet. Tread water there, buddy. <laughs> tread water. I got to get this parka off. <laughs> In June of 1915, he was promoted to the rank of lieutenant junior grade. In 1918, he was promoted to the permanent rank of lieutenant okay. senior grade. Uh-huh. For his service during World War 1, he received a letter of com- bleh, commendation from the Secretary of the Navy, which would be converted to a Navy Commendation Medal after World War II. So far, we're building a rapport of he is a credible person. And a good fucking dude. But he will not take his clothes off and he'll save you. Because he's a good dude. I've seen somebody get saved before without taking their clothes off. Yeah? Yeah. Um, Okay. A few people who have listened (laughs) to this will, will remember the story, but yeah. Yeah, they were saving you. No, it wasn't me. It was my sister. Fucking dog. <laughs> <laughs> Brock is like, I did it. <laughs> uh, which sister? There's you, you only got six of them. The next one down. Ah, uh, so Bird volunteered to be the word. <laughs> <laughs> beat me to it. <laughs> Bird volunteered to be a crew member so good. in the U.S. Navy's 1919 aerial transatlantic crossing, but unfortunately, Bird didn't meet the requirements to go. But he was allowed to make a valuable contribution still, as his expertise in aerial navigation resulted in his appointment to plan the flight path of the mission. I was expecting, uh, he couldn't go, but he was able to make a contribution, and then the meeting was like, sorry, you just, you don't have, you're blind, you don't have, you have to wear glasses, you can't fly, but what you can do is you can give us $5,000 for this flight. <laughs> you got yourself a goddamn deal. <laughs> that sounds good to me. <laughs> no, actually, the requirements were that you have to have had... Hello, Brock. You're not, you don't qualify either. So the qualifications were that he had to, or you had to uh, serve overseas. And mm. 
I think he served in Nova Scotia. I might be wrong on that. It's over but AC. <laughs> it is, but they didn't count it as overseas. Therefore, he didn't qualify. That's some <laughs> fucking stupid ass, but corporate bullshit. He still helped with it. He, you know, planned the whole flight path of the mission. So. Motherfuckers out here saving people's lives, fully clothed, by the way. <laughs> yeah, and they yeah. can't even. His let dingle him barrier him. wasn't hanging out. Hell no. His ding dong is what I meant to say. His dingle is something totally different. <laughs> dingle <bear. laughs> <laughs> Didn't uh, catch that. Yeah, mistakes <laughs> happened. And, Dingleberries uh, and accommodations. <laughs> you have to do it sometimes. So, <laughs> ah! <laughs> got stuck again. In 1921, Bird was assigned to the. Uh, I was supposed to look this word up to see if I could say it right. Millennium <clears throat> Falcon. That would be easy. <laughs> uh, he was assigned to the dirigible ZR. But, as fate would have it, he would end up missing his train to take him to the airship, which would end up breaking apart in midair and killing 44 of the 49 crew members. Holy fuck. Let me tell you what. That's why I don't fly. <laughs> yeah. I don't like that shit. I know you don't. But hey. Yeah. Save the hero, though. <laughs> Actually, that's fucked up because 44 died. Wow. So. <laughs> <laughs> what a dick. There were 44 heroes on that flight, you jackass. Shit. Well, uh, moving on. <laughs> so, <laughs> Bird would lose several friends in this accident. The accident would affect him. The accident would affect him deeply, and it inspired him to make safety a top priority in all his future expeditions. Sorry. <laughs> Again, for building... Yes, the, he's a credible, good dude. Yeah. Admiral Byrd served as a navigator on the first flight over Ar- over the Arctic mm-hmm. and the North Pole, mm-hmm. as well as Antarctica and the South Pole. In one flight over the North Pole, Byrd claims to have discovered the entrance to a legendary city at the entrance or at the center of the earth known as Bloomingdale's. Agartha. Oh, I've heard of that. Fuck me. <laughs> How are you saying it for the episode? Agartha. Agartha. Okay. I'm there's multiple different pronunciations. There's Agartha. Ag- g- 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 that's a tough one, but then there's Agartha. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on May 9th, 1926, Admiral Byrd and Navy Chief Aviation Pilot Pink Floyd, uh, no, Floyd Bennett, uh. took off from Spitsbergen, Norway. In a uh, Fokker tri-motor airplane named Josephine Ford. Great. There were so many names in there that I just needed, like, (laughs) I need a good 10 minutes to process each of those. So they named it Josephine Ford after uh, the owner of the Ford Motor Company, who apparently was friends and supported Admiral Byrd's uh, exploration of the North Pole. And Josephine Ford was his daughter's name, if I remember correctly. Henry Ford. Yeah, Henry Ford's daughter's name. Mm Mm-hmm. So they named the fucking airplane after, I guess. Mm, they're riding Josephine Ford. Yeah, I'm they, sure he loved that. <laughs> they're riding inside her. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Four men riding inside her. <laughs> Two men, but that's that's all right. Oh, <laughs> that's all right. Not all right. <laughs> <laughs> Just double penetration. Okay. Their journey was attempt. Nope. Their journey was to attempt the first flight over the North Pole. Sure. The flight lasted 15 and a half hours with no mishaps beyond an oil leak from the starboard engine. Okay. For this feat, they were both awarded the U.S. Congressional Medal of Honor and were acclaimed as national heroes. That's awesome. Good on them. Fun fact. Great, here we go. In 1996, the diary that Bird kept on his famous flight was discovered, and one entry suggests that the plane was still about 150 miles short of the North Pole when Bird decided to turn back because of his concerns over the said oil leak. Mm-hmm. If true... The first flight over the North Pole would actually be credited to Ronald Amundsen of Norway, Lincoln Ellsworth of the U.S., and Umberto Nobel of Italy, who made the flight three days after them. This was a popular flight for that week. <laughs> it was. <laughs> the first Atlanta, uh, Atlanta. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, and seventh. The, yeah, the, the first, uh, what, what was it, crossing of the, the North Pole? Yes. Yeah, uh. And what it happened in three within three days of each other? Yeah, interesting. I think they were like in a race, so uh, which would be why, if that was true, they lied. But well, 
Not necessarily. Well, did they have to go there and then come back, or did yeah. they have to go there across and land somewhere else on the other side? So as far as I know, because they had to go. Because that would have been the back. only way to actually prove. So. Because the quickest have, way would be go over. They do around. have navigational records from yeah. the plane. Yeah. But I have no clue where those are. Mm. It's all um, good. Because they, they have that for his next trip, too. Well, it's mm-hmm. not his next trip, but later on. Anyways. Uh, yeah, theoretically, they were supposed to fly there. Supposedly, they circled around for 13 minutes, the North Pole, and then came back, mm. I guess. Um, interesting. Very interesting. Interesting, indeed. I'm trying to find it again. Yeah, it was just flight over the North Pole. It doesn't necessarily say it went th- through to the other side. Got it. Break on through to the other side. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> Admiral Byrd allegedly undertook another flight over the North Pole in 1947. Mm-hmm. He supposedly kept a diary of this expedition in which he described his journey into the center of the Earth. He states that it was an entirely different environment as he passed the pole citing rolling green hills and temperatures of 74 degrees. He claimed he was directed to land by messages coming into his aircraft. He landed his craft and explained that he and his pilot were approaching, approaching, sorry, approached by beings of inner earth who referred to them as surface world men. Hmm. According to his host, or their hosts, yeah. he was allowed to enter this place known as Argatha. Sorry. Agartha, uh, because he was, uh, yeah, because of his high moral and ethical status, mm-hmm. they apparently reprimanded him for humanity's recent invention of the atomic bomb, and warned that a dark age is coming if humans don't shape up. He was sent on his way with instructions to bring this message back to the surface, people. Well, I, I mean, I think they were spot the fuck on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Atomic bomb is uh, nothing to fuck with. Well, I mean, yeah, and but since what then, we're doing the Earth, I know. Yeah, I was no, I was just oh. saying, like, since then, dark age. <laughs> <laughs> On Bird's return, Bird, he stated that he had a meeting with the Pentagon. He was ordered to remain silent, and Bird followed orders like a good military man that he was. Admiral Bird was a decorated military man and public figure. Mm-hmm. It doesn't seem likely that he would lie about this and would rather keep it a secret. Hence, that was known from his diaries. Yes. So is this diary entry real or was it made up by a hoaxer? Well, there is one problem with this story. During the time of his alleged trip to inner earth, he was documented blah, He was documented to have been on the other side of the planet in Antarctica, participating in... Operation High High Jump. jump. Yeah. So, is this proof that the flight never took place? Or was this an intentional misinformation tactic to hide his real whereabouts? You be the judge. Now that we have briefly dust... Now, this was a brief dusting of the subterranean civilization known as Agartha. (laughs) For more on Agartha and other potential civilizations, I throw it over to my main man and counterpart, or sorry, compatriot, Lennon. Back to me. <laughs> I said counterpart. He did say that. <laughs> I didn't mean it. I meant compatriot. Awesome. Well, uh, com- <coughs> uh, uh, comrade. <laughs> <laughs> Help, I'm stuck again. Um, I'm going to start with Agartha. Okay. You're good. There was a transition right into it. Because it's beautiful. It is beautiful. And it's also 800 miles now. Now let's talk about some of the different <laughs> theories on what lies within the tunnel. Do it. Past the Andermile crust. Yep. One theory is that there is an ancient city of Agartha, a city where the Nazis supposedly believed existed and seeked out. Now, let's talk about the Nazis real quick. Um, no. I don't want to, but we have to. They, um, we don't have to do anything. It's our podcast. We can. So they mishmashed a whole bunch of shit from different like occult stuff throughout the centuries together to make their own... To fit their stupid ass beliefs. <clears throat> Sorry, talking about uh, Nazis or Nazis this research? Okay, Nazis. Nazis yes. I was about to say, don't call it your research like this. No, no, no. Um, so Agartha was part of their belief, okay. but so was uh, a thousand other things. Gotcha. You know. Um, but before the Nazis got the, got their grubby little mitts on the legend, it was first brought to the world's attention in a book by eighteen eighty in eighteen eighty six by by eighteen eighty six. Yes, by That's French a good person. Uh, yeah, he is he's a great guy, good good guy. Jumps into the water with his clothes on. Yeah, he's French too. Apparently, <laughs> it was 
Fuck you. <laughs> By French philosopher and occultist, Alexandra Dure, Alexander St. Ives. St. Ives. St. Ives. In his book. Knives, 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 knives. I said knives. Yeah, it did a few times. <laughs> <laughs> In his book, he detailed his accounts with the so-called initiates from Agartha. Agartha what are you, Dr. Evil? Initiates. <laughs> <laughs> Agartha is said to be linked to every continent via an intricate tunnel system, which allows them across to every corner to access to every corner of the globe. Who inhabits Agartha, though? Its history might be traced back to pre-Hindu India, where a legend foretold of an island within an inland sea mm. where a race of superhuman beings lived. And Praveen now makes his entrance. He does. But disaster struck the earth. Please let me go, guys. <laughs> Is the gun necessary? <laughs> I mean, I'm already in the car. <laughs> you got seatbelts over my arm. <laughs> it's right, it's right, it's right. Oh my <laughs> but disaster struck the earth, and fleeing from this disaster, they went underground. Deep underground. Was it the end? Dryas effect? No. Uh, fucking, what's that word I'm trying to say? Oh, whatever. The Amadeus? big flood. Amadeus Wolfgang? Yeah, Mozart. <laughs> yeah. Was it Mozart? Did he come and start playing? He's like, God yeah. damn it. I'm this, sick of this music. This fucking harpsichord sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of here. Peace, bitches. Um, they were set up there. Well, but yeah. I'm going to turn that over. Younger, driest. Thank you. Well, you. Can't you just tell me that? Because it was funnier to let you struggle. <laughs> they were s- there once they went underground. There they set up the civilization and city of Agartha. Oh. These inhabitants of Agartha are said to have a highly advanced technological society, and it is believed that some of the more notable spiritual and secret societal deities and higher evolutionaries throughout history are actually Agarthians, who came to the surface world and interacted with us surface dwellers? Fucking so many prominent, dwellers. right? So many prominent, um, not like de- not so much like ah, oh, it's the Christian God, but more like Jesus Christ level. Jesus you know what I'm saying? Christ of throughout history, that. um, they think of maybe our Agarthians. More so, they possess a vast array of knowledge through their many enormous libraries, including the complete histories of humanity from its origin to presumably present day. Oh. St. Ives claimed that this knowledge and vast wealth they possess will be made available to humanity once the religions of the world begin to honor their own teachings, the Agarthians' teachings. I don't honor anybody's teachings. Exactly. Not even my stew teachers. Or you, school teachers. Uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, I don't eat. What? I don't eat or... Oh, they said I don't eat. I was like, I, okay. I don't eat right now. <laughs> St. Ives claimed to have learned of the city of Agartha and its vast lore and history from Easterner initiates. Before his death, St. Ives was worried he may have revealed too much information about the hidden society and vowed to destroy every copy of the book. Ah, shit. In 1908, uh, he died. Okay, fuck that guy. He died, not in 1908, but he died without destroying every copy. But in 1908, a book was published by American author Indigo Swan. I messed up again. It oh. wasn't republished in 1908. Oh. He just died. <laughs> okay, he died. I got it. New thought. New thought. In 1908, a book was published by an American author detailing the account of a Norwegian sailor named Olaf Jansen, who Ooh. claimed to have sailed through a tunnel in the North Pole to the inner Earth. Turned into a snowman. Yeah. There he claimed to have lived with 12-foot-tall beings for two years. Tam. Tam, tam, tam. <laughs> they had a vast network of colonies, all of which were lit by a central smoky sun. It, he, it was described as a smoky sun. In the years since also the known bo- as a fire. <laughs> in the years since the book's release, it is believed that this place in which he described was actually the city of Agartha. If you're interested, you can find the entire book as a pr- free PDF version online called it's called the smoky god by willis george emerson emerson now willis george emerson's dad supposedly sailed with olaf jansen okay and so um willis wrote his dad's account of olaf's account because they sailed together and he told him all this shit and olaf now i did not read this book because it's 
long. Yeah, and no time. And uh, there's that problem too. Yes. So I don't know if uh, Ola, if um, Willis's dad actually made this trip as well. Okay. So, or if he was just told while sailing with him by him, you know what I mean? I do. Yeah. But anyway, it's online. If it was an actual account of what he witnessed, or if it was just a tale of what Olaf a recounting, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's called The Smoky Guide by Willis George Emerson. Smoking gun. Agartha is up there for these theorists as the top choice for what lies within the hollow earth. Now, let's Sounds talk about beautiful. another one. Now, let me give you a little backstory on this one. Back it up. There back it up, is... back it up. Let me begin. Oh, hey. Well, back it up, back it up. <laughs> Let me begin. He says, hey. Oh. <laughs> I know that one. <laughs> now, <clears throat> years and years ago, yeah, I was listening to a podcast. Okay. This podcast... They were detailing this incredible story. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Now, I wanted to do my own research onto the story because it fascinated me. Did you do it? I did not get around to it. Son of a dick. Now, this podcast is one of the podcasts where they only have their first, they only have like 10 episodes available at a time and the rest go into like um, a paid wall, a paywall. Um, I hate that. It sucks. So, (laughs) we're actually going to start introducing this now. now. (laughs) Kidding. No. No. Hell no. Um, but anyway, so I never got the chance and I never remembered where it was in these past years to find it. But let me tell you, in my research, I you stumbled a pound upon it. A pound it. <laughs> stumbled upon it. I don't stumble upon it. Now, let me tell you the story of the Makuxi. Oh, I like that name. In the Amazon, there's yeah. a tribe of indigenous peoples called the Makuxi. I like it. Makuxi. I'm gonna say it with my American accent. It's Makuxi. Makuxi. That these Not Makuxi. your British accent. I like it. These Makuxi have long... <laughs> what the fuck was that? It was uh, Norwegian, I think. I don't <laughs> yeah. know. These Makuxi have long believed in the idea of the Hollow Earth through their legends. Yeah. According to their legend, they are the descendants of the sun's children and the protectors of the inner earth. The legend of the inner earth in their culture tells of an entrance where once they make the 15-day-long journey in, they will reach the race of giants within. Giants that they say are three to four meters tall. The first three days of the journey are all descending giant steps. Three days worth of descending stairs that are 33 inches tall. So there's that three day number of three. Exactly. Three three day nonstop descent of stairs. 33 inches tall. Exactly. And then there was 30 minutes of that. And afterwards, they did three men at a time through three doors. Using 30 minutes of cardio. (laughs) Exactly. And they had to have at least three inches of cock. After the third day. Yes, after the third day. They reached the lanterns. Green lantern, black lantern. Yellow. Red lantern. Purple. Purple is one. Oh, there's purple. There's a pink one, too. All right. Anyway. There's the lanterns. Once they reached the lanterns, they would ditch their torches because they were no longer needed. Giant lanterns the size of watermelons illuminated their path as bright as the sun. Now, once they got down to the stairs and they got to the lanterns, they were now in these ginormous caverns. Mm -hmm. It was a big cavern cave system. Nope. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Um, By day four and five, those making the journey would begin to shed pounds, which allowed them to travel much quicker and expedite the trip, which still took 14 to 15 days. Hmm. I know it doesn't line up, but this is how their legend goes. Oh, it's okay. Shedding pounds. It's just interesting. I mean, it makes sense if you're not eating all the time. You're constantly walking. I just thought it was funny that that, that is part of the legend. <laughs> you, you start shedding pounds. You it's do. It's great cardio. <laughs> it's good. On day five, the cavern they had been walking through would open up to a ceiling so high that they could not see the top. Mm. In one of the massive chambers that they trekked oh, through... Oh. Well, you keep going. There's an echo. <laughs> and one of the massive chambers that they trekked through, mm-hmm. four massive sun-like objects hung or floated above, which they could not stare at because it was too bright. So what the hell were these things? These giant orbs of light. Pixies. Pixies. It was just a conglomerate of pixies. Exactly. It's it was the annual pixie convention. <laughs> <laughs> gotta have one. You gotta, gotta have you one. Gotta do it. It's just... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So they couldn't stare at it because they were so bright. So mm. six to seven days into the journey, edible vegetation could be found growing within. Finally, they can eat. Exactly. The Makuxi say that the further you go in, the larger and more common these patches of vegetation become. 
but so too come the dangerous areas which should be avoided, such as the areas with, as they call it, the boiling stone. Oh, no. Yes. Uh, once they've passed through the cavern chambers, they have reached the halfway point of their journey. But the next area they need to be cautious of due to the peculiar pockets of air which cause them to inexplicably float away. Oh, I thought you were about to say combust. No. Yeah, worried. But you float away. <laughs> well, well, you know. You know how scary that would be? Uh, yeah, that, I mean, if you just start floating, it would be pretty fucking scary. Yeah, and but why are they floating away? I don't know. They blamed it on these pockets of air that caused them to float. Okay. Maybe there's helium, but I don't know. I mean, that much helium is not enough. I don't know. <coughs> but either way. They, like, stuck a lot of it in the... It might not be pockets of air, but more so magnetic. Not magnetic. Gra- uh, yeah, gravitational anomaly something or other. The remainder of the journey, this was at uh, run day six to seven. Yeah. <clears throat> the remainder of the journey seems to be made up of these points as they grow closer to the inner earth home of the giants. Dangerous places, pockets of food sources or fruits or other plants that they could eat like bananas, mangoes, and floaty air, I called it. Ooh, mangoes. So they're just trekking through these caverns the rest of the way. Yeah, random sunspots, the random orbs of many suns, I'll call them. Random because gravitational they, anomalies. Exactly. And boiling stone, which I'm assuming is lava. I would go with that, yeah, yeah. probably lava. By f- day 14 or 15, depending on the slow pokes, they would finally reach the giant's home. There amongst these beings, they could find massive plant and animal life. Apples as big as your head, grape, grapes the size of an apple... I okay. fucking love grapes, so I'd fuck up a grape the size of an apple. Well, I don't know why I made it the size of a fucking uh, pineapple. <laughs> I don't know. An apple. Grapes the size of an apple. And enormous fish that were gifted to the Makuxi by the giants. They, oh. they didn't give size on these fish, but if they're giant compared to what they fish, right? these things have to be like 20 feet long, like the size of sharks. Well, that, what, that, you'd feed a fucking village. Well, because think about it in like the Amazon stuff, you got like, uh, you got like five Six foot long fish, like yeah. Arabima and shit. I think oh. Arabima are in Amazon. Those are big or rockets. Or the sturgeons. There is some sturgeon, I'm sure. Those I fuckers mean, are dinosaurs Amazon, sorry, big. I just, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Just, I, I just realized you were talking about the Amazon alone. I thought you were just naming big fish. My bad. No, I was talking about the... Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I gotcha, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <clears throat> After a visit and a restock, they would turn around and make the 15-day return trip. Wow, that was a great trip. Thank well, they, they, have, have a good day. Who knows how long they stayed? <laughs> they might have stayed, mingled with the locals, went to the strip clubs, you know. Hey, Don. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the strip clubs, the big hairy animal, or not animal, the big hairy giants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you turned into the boys. Fuck the little one. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting nothing out of this. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, oops, I just done that. Ah, fucking hit it. Let's just go. So the Makuxi legend says that they were entrusted to be the guardians of the entrances to the inner world, to protect the entrance from outsiders and strangers alike, keeping safe the wealth, knowledge, and society that dwelled within the earth. But when the British explorers came to the Amazon in search of Amazonian treasure, they ventured into the many caves and caverns, never to return. Now, the Makuxi then believed that because of the invasion of the entrances and not upholding their duties as guardians and protectors, the giants punished them. And since since then, the legends of the giants, the hidden world, and the long journey to reach both have faded from practice. So supposedly, they made this journey up until... Like the 1900s. Well, not anymore. Yeah. Um, the well, link to this full, there. yeah, the link to this full PDF, um, I don't know if it was like an article or a book or what, but it was like 10 pages long. It was pictures. Ooh. Yes. Your favorite picture book. I love pictures. I got to get the pictures. <laughs> um, what you were telling Admiral Byrd's story. I was looking up Admiral Byrd, like, I was looking the planes up and shit. Were you? No. Real quick, I did. Did you? I needed to. <laughs> um, I want to see what it's hard to spell some of those planes. Yes. Especially when you can't pronounce them because you're an idiot. Well, Josephine Ford was easy. Yeah. Oh, Um, that's true. JF. Oh, anyway, the links are in the show notes about (laughs) the the PDF. I did. (sighs) (laughs) The link is in the show notes, the PDF, um, and it tells a lot more detail than what I had. 
stand for. I mean, you know what I mean. I do. So well, now we're finally going to touch on everyone's favorite, the reptilians. Besides being one of the most popular alien species in almost every other conspiracy theory, the reptilians also make a guest appearance in the Hollow Earth theory too. Hi hey guys, Hi. get out of here! <laughs> All right. I I don't know what a lizard makes. I can't do. A... Well, it depends if they're disguising themselves as part of the U.S. government or. That's true. That's true. The reptilians are known by most Geckos. to be shape shifting lizard like beings that secretly run our world that hide out on our planet, originating from Alpha Draconis. But this theory's lizard people might be different from the 15 foot tall shapeshifters we all know and love. 15 foot tall? Yeah, they're huge motherfuckers. I didn't, I, I didn't know this part. Well, I mean, yeah. they're shape shifting and all yeah. that, but. They're 15. basically scrolls. I like it, but I don't. Legend says. I actually. Oh, shit. Yeah. Tell me your secrets. Take oh, me with you. I will. <laughs> I, I will. <laughs> Legend says that <clears throat> hidden deep underground within our inner earth, the advanced society of beings are actually subterranean lizard people and that there may be evidence to support it. Yeah. Hopi legend tells of the Snake Brothers who built underground cities located under what is now California, Arizona, Mexico, and Central America. That's a big place. It is. Following legend, 5,000 years ago, these cities, along with the inhabitants, a society of full of lizard beings, vanished. They disappeared. Thank you. But in 1934, an article came out in the LA Times claiming that one of these cities might have been found, and it's directly underneath Los Angeles. Ooh. Oh, shit! <laughs> <laughs> um, the subterranean city supposedly consisted of an intricate tunnel system. Mm-hmm. Which connected all of the major areas together and even to the surface. A mining engineer named Warren Schufelt was ready. All right. to, was ready to <laughs> yeah. halfway through. I was like, "Is it is it Schufle? <laughs> no, it's Schufelt. <laughs> Schufle sounds better though. It does. Schufle. It's kind of like a souffle. <laughs> it's all of it. <laughs> Warren Schufelt though. Yeah, was ready to dig up the downtown financial district in his Damn. search to uncover the lost city. <laughs> Kevin Hart over here. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> I'm sorry, man. That just came out. <laughs> so good. The city council was on board. That was perfect timing, too. The city council was on board with it, too. But, 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 but. <laughs> he lost the spot. The city council was on board with it, too. Oh. Un- until, but, they weren't. Oh. Digging up the city's major metropolitan area in search of lizard people, in search of a lizard people city, probably wasn't a good idea. Why? Well, supposedly, Warren Schufelt did extensive mapping of the tunnel system, maps which can be found today, but never got the chance to find the city fully. This is the tunnels! Yeah, I, <laughs> I had nothing. I tried something. Since 19... <laughs> I tried something. <laughs> Since 1934... Yeah. And Warren Schufelt. <laughs> so the year 1934 and Warren Schufelt. Got yeah. It. A lot of excavating has taken place in the city mm-hmm. as it undergoes its evolution and growth. And many tunnels have been found. But they have all been attributed to criminal activity and not the lizard people. Oh, the criminal underground. Yeah. But that hasn't stopped the hollow earthers. To them, we may never know for sure what species of advanced being lives within the hollow earth. <laughs> but they can all agree on the fact that within our planet, Deep below our surface world society, mm-hmm. the Earth is hollow. My sound is on. I'm sorry. It's okay. The Earth is hollow, habitable, and hidden from us. Oh. Thank you. Light refreshments will be served in the back. Lizard Man meet and greet at 415 in Hall C for advanced VIP tickets. Oh. And that is My some foot. of the subterranean species. Oh. That's us traveling to yeah, the subterranean. Give me the fucking chills. <laughs> Why? I it's like it's like nails on a chalkboard. I fucking don't like it. All right. I don't like it. Well, I can't do it. Come on. Don't do it, motherfucker. The alleged eyewitness testimonies of people who claim to have visited or communicated with the inner earth, such as Admiral Bird, I've heard of him, and the historical accounts of Agartha and. Underworlds and various ancient cultures, as well as the Amazon people that I forgot the name and Makuxi. Makuxi, thank you. What'd you think of that story, by the way? I thought it was incredible. It's pretty wild. And I want to go. 
They actually made the trip until 1900. Supposedly. Allegedly. I want to go. Show me. Show me. <laughs> Show me. Show me. Uh, the Lenin just cultured. Covered. <laughs> Are some of the arguments and evidence that may support this theory. Oh, this dog is like going Shut to town. Shut the fuck up! <laughs> going to town out there. Other proof... Other proof believers use are the phenomenon phenomena observed at the polar regions like the aurora borealis, mm. warm winds, mm. freshwater icebergs. Say warm winds? Yeah, that's what I said. Mystical. <laughs> I know. It's literally just a low pressure, high pressure, temperature inversion thing. But hey, whatever. Shit, you got real sciencey on me. <laughs> I'm lost. Go ahead. Freshwater icebergs and magnetic anomalies. The concept of a conclaved Earth is also, I think you kind of talked about it. No, you didn't talk about it. So instead of saying that humans live on the outside surface of a hollow planet, uh -huh. sometimes called a convex hollow Earth hypothesis, some have claimed humans live on the inside surface of a hollow spherical, spherical world so that our universe itself lies in the world's interior. Ah, this has been called the Conclaved Hollow Earth Hypothesis. Concave. Concave. Yeah. And there's no L. I didn't say L. Yeah. Concave. You said Conclave. Well, if I did, I meant Concaved. Well, it's okay. I Motherfucker. Just... Trying to help you. <laughs> Corvus Clave. <laughs> this has been called the Concave Hollow Earth Hypothesis or <laughs> Sky Centrism. Dude, that fucking hurts my head. What? Thinking about how we always know like this. Yeah. But now it's like this. Oh, God. Yeah, I tried to do some more research into that, and it was over my head, so I didn't want to like... Over your head, more uh -huh. like... Yeah. Just like Australia, you know what I'm saying? If it was that, your theory was true. Hey, you doing? God, uh, yeah, they were saying that there's multiple layers of it, and each one has its own universe and something like that. I really didn't get too much into it, because I just Fucking didn't understand brain's it. brain's melting. So I, I did the whole uh, thanopsis of it. Great. How about the cover-up and censorship of information about Hollow Earth by governments? Yeah, fuck. Yeah. And the mainstream media. All right. Uh, some accuse them of manipulating satellite images and hiding ancient texts and artifacts that reveal the truth about inner Earth. Yeah, they've never done that with anything else before. No, no, no. They don't. Um, doctor any pictures. They Never. don't block out anything. Um, isn't there like a spot in ancient in ancient aliens? Oh my god! Isn't there a spot in like Antarctica where it's you can't see it with satellite? Yes, because there's supposedly a giant hole there. Um, well, that's, that's the theory. The, yes, um, the Google Earth pictures. Uh, yeah. All of a sudden, all the terrain and different details. It's yeah. it's now all of a sudden just like white just flat. Oh, which I'm sorry. It's yeah. It co abruptly ends. Yeah, and it does look doctored. We, yes, yeah, that wouldn't that would that would track with everything else. Yes, I mean, they don't doctor pictures of the universe and planets and the moon and Google Mars. Sheets Earth, Google Sheets Earth, <laughs> Google Sheets Earth. Uh, did you know the distance? From the Earth's crust to the center of the Earth is 4,000 miles. That leaves a ton of hiding places and possibilities of there being a inner Earth. Ah. And also the fact that you can't travel to Antarctica, it's banned. Yeah, Allegedly. yeah, that fucking shit. Allegedly. I'm looking at Antarctica. Yeah. Ah, right <laughs> close to that. Right close to that camera. I'm finding, I'm finding exactly not what I was what talking I was, about. I don't know. It's definitely, yeah. There's some weird stuff going on. Maybe could it be? Guys, <laughs> go on Google Earth and zoom into the Pacific Ocean. Tell me what the fuck all these lines are. I'm gonna like talk normal for a second. Seriously, tell me what the fuck all these lines are on the ocean floor. Are they depths of the ocean? No. Well, I or... get the terrain, the topography, yes. But there's straight fucking lines that intersect everywhere. Is it maybe, well, 
you do realize it's multiple pictures together. Do they just do a shitty job putting them together? No. No? Because there's topography on the lines when you zoom in. Hmm. Oh, the Pacific or the Atlantic Ocean's riddled with it. Well, you can see the tectonic plate and stuff, which is separate. So now I know what the tectonic plate looks like on here. Mm-hmm. But what the fuck? Where are you? Go to the Pacific Ocean and just, like, look around. You see all these lines, like, emanating from, like, Hawaii, coming off the, around the coast, go down by Mexico City. Do you see what I'm talking about? Yeah. I can only think of trenches and um, elevation. And but there line, are a lot of lines. Straight lines like that? Because then you could see the actual trenches. So it looks like... I, I zoomed into a couple of them, and it just looks like a valley. I don't know. Uh, and then I zoomed in again, and the only spots that are clear are those, are those lines. lines. Everything else is blurred. Right. And it has uh, Google, or 2023 Google on it. So, uh, unfortunately, this is about all the evidence. I really kind of had to dig and couldn't really find much evidence for Same with reptilians. It's all good. So, there's that. Uh, but in every good argument, you look at both sides, right? Yeah. So let's look at the evidence against okay. there being a hollow earth. Okay. Let's start first with a couple points that I made above. Freshwater icebergs. These are formed by snowfall that accumulate over time. The snowfall then compresses to form ice, and as more snow falls, the ice grow- layer grows thicker. As the ice accumulates... It pushes the older, denser ice to the edge of the ice cap, where it is eventually flows into the ocean. Mm-hmm. These process, uh, sorry, this process is known as ice flow. Dude, the ocean, sorry, the ocean surrounding Antarctica and the North Pole is salt water, mm-hmm. but the ice itself is therefore fresh water because mm-hmm. it's made of the snowfall. So that explains your freshwater icebergs. How about band travel? Band travel. In fact, travelers do not need permission to go to Antarctica, but tourism operations must hold a valid permit. Antarctica is not a country. The continent is protected by the Antarctic Treaty, which preserves it for peaceful and scientific use. The treaty are related... The treaty and related agreements ensure that all human activity is carefully managed and planned, including environmentally sensitive tourism. As of 2023, the treaty has 56 signatory parties. Tourism op- tourism operators in Antarctica submit stringent permit applications annually. If their planned activities meet all criteria, they are authorized and granted a permit. Also, there are apparently no no-fly zones in Antarctica, mm. as we've been led to believe. Or, so they say. Seismic waves now. A couple, now, two that are not above. Seismic waves. The time it takes for a seismic wave to travel through and around the Earth directly contradicts the fully hollow severe theory. The evidence indicates the Earth is mostly filled with solid rock, which is our mantle and crust. Yes. Liquid nickel iron aloe which is our outer core, uh-huh. and solid nickel iron, which is our inner core. All right. I'll get to that in a second. It's very fascinating that so you have the core or yeah. the crust, yep. liquid magma, yeah. magma, yeah. and then you have our solid core. How do they know what the solid core is made out of? That's my question. They've drilled down. Through the, <laughs> through the um, no. magma layer? Yeah. 800, or 800, sorry, uh, what was it, 4,000 feet? Yeah, miles. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And you just get a <laughs> yeah, big just, drill, but yeah. just get a big drill, yeah. but <laughs> go a little bit further, you'll be in uh, China. Gravity, yes, yes, gravity is another theory against it. All right, massive objects tend to clump together gravitationally, creating a non-hollow spherical objects such as stars and planets. Ordinary matter is not strong enough to support a hollow shape of a planetary size against the force of gravity. A planet-sized hollow shell with the known observed thickness of Earth's crust, of I forgot how big it was, my mm-hmm. bad, would not be able to achieve hydrostatic equilibrium with its own mass, and it would just collapse. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, but with everything laid on the table, let's get into our final fucking thoughts. Or our thoughts in. We've presented the facts. It's time now to examine the evidence and give our theories. So pull up a chair for our final thoughts. <laughs> Science. Now, as a gracious host, I usually tell you you can go first. And nothing's changed here. You can go first. There, it's not flat. Oh, <clears throat> I concur on that one. Um, Dr. Lennon here speaking at you. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> nobody, I guess. Well, yeah. I can't say nobody. Admiral knows, Byrd but. is a very credible man. He is. From his accounts. Mm-hmm. Now, the credibility of... The diary is what is the question. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, if that was real, I would believe him. Mm-hmm. If it was like proven, you know, based off of his standing, I would believe that he actually did have that stuff happen to him. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like the legend of the Makuxi. Makuxi. Yes. I like the fact that they apparently were making this trek up until recent times, um, there is some pictures yeah. of some of the stuff from the caves. And? It was very convincing. Okay. I'll have to check those out. Oh, they'll be in the video, but I'll have to check them out for myself. Yeah. Um, if you were to ask me right now, um, A, do you believe the Earth is hollow or not? Yes. A, hey, Lennon, do you believe the Earth is hollow or not? Uh, gut answer right away, I have to say no. Okay. Out of all the conspiracy theories, this is one that I don't 100% believe. Um, more so because, um, I don't know, it's out there. <laughs> but I do believe it's out there once. But there is some evidence that is fan- fantastic. Now, the Earth may not be hollow, but there may be races of civilizations that live underground. The crust is thick enough for that. Exactly. I mean, the, they may have made a 15-day trip not to the center but down and then horizontally, you know? So, I don't know. Yeah. I don't don't think so. Yeah. We'll we'll buy you. I agree. I don't think it's an actual hollow earth. Yeah. I do think there are uh, um, subterranean civilizations. Yeah, thank you. Because like we just stated, it's big enough. Yeah. Because the 800 miles. There seems to be more credible evidence about that. Yeah. Uh, so I would agree with that because it's just a lot of scientific, especially gravitation. Unless we know nothing about, like, science, mm-hmm. which I don't believe that's the case. I don't, don't think it's scientifically possible <laughs> yeah. to have a hollow Earth without it, like it said, in, uh, collapsing in in, in in itself. Right, right, right. Um, but yeah. So I guess these questions are irrelevant because I'm not going to lie to you. I really thought you were going to go with the, you thought it was true. No, sorry. Uh, no, don't be. I was going to ask, how would gravitation... Gravity work inside a hollow Earth. Don't know. <laughs> exactly. And I was going to ask, if the Earth is hollow and civilization, civilization does indeed live there, what would happen if you fell into the hollow Earth? Or better yet, how would you enter the hollow Earth? Mm. Through the 1,400-mile-wide holes. Apparently, yeah. But, <laughs> but how? Like, Does gravitation, is the... I don't know. You know, with the theory. Yeah, yeah, Going yeah. with the theory. Well, is, like, the, is the... like Here's our... Outer Earth, mm-hmm. and then the inner Earth is just on the other side, or is there a whole other planet? Either way, how do you get there? Because that means gravity is pulling this way. I guess you kind of answered that with one of your accounts that they just walk around it. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I, yeah. I couldn't figure out a way until you said that. Mm-hmm. Uh, if the Earth is hollow, how does it keep from collapsing in on itself? Was my last question I was going to ask. But none of it's relevant because <laughs> you don't think. <laughs> I do not. We think similar on this one. Now, if we were discussing Hollow Moon, we both, I think, have a different uh, thought process there. Maybe we don't. I don't know. Not? Or is it? Is it a moon base? We'll have to to touch back on that in a later episode. Well, you know. Is it a hollow bell? Either way, that was a quick final thought, seeing as we uh, have the same fucking thoughts. Beautiful. (laughs) It's not hollow. There's subterranean Hey, think for yourself, though. Tell us what you think. No, no, we're telling you what to think. It's not fucking hollow, you psychos. Just like it's not flat. It's the cult of DTS. (laughs) I'm just kidding. Also, of Admiral Byrd, I think he's a very credible man. 
And I would believe his diaries, like you said, if they're mm-hmm. actual true. Because in one of them, it did state that he didn't make it to North Pole. Yeah. And I believe that was in the clump that were, like, actually his diaries. This yeah. one was released later or earlier. I can't remember which. I think it was later and was separate, like a hidden diary. Yeah. And explained about the subterranean world. And the theory was that because he was sworn to secrecy, him and his uh, pilot yeah. that he had, um, that he wrote about it but never spoke about it. Mm-hmm. And that this diary was his confession mm-hmm. without breaking his, his right. promise. Yeah. But also, you or I could write a diary and claim it's from so and so and make it look old and, you know? Very true. Very so true. That was that. Yeah. That's why I, d- I don't think it taints his reputation. I no, think it's no, just no, no. a hoax from somebody else. Unfortunately. My thought. Yes. Doesn't mean it's true. So, is our Earth hollow? And if so, What dwells in the depths of this subterranean ecosystem? We may never know. But if the tales of our ancestors as well as our, is that of those who have claimed to have gone there themselves, hold true, then we may be just scratching the surface of what we know about our own planet. But for now, that's our theories. Those are our theories. And we're sticking to them. We are. Lennon, Maestro, Compatre, hit him with that fucking outro, baby. Send him home. Ladies, gentlemen, squatches, and Captain John Cleve Sims Jr. You keep saying that, right? To like throw my drink and yeah. catch it. I like it. Thank you all so much for listening to this week's episode. Yeah. If you would like to reach out and let us know your thoughts and opinions, you can do so by finding us on Instagram, Reddit, Facebook, and on our YouTube channel. Hit the subscribe button for Bing. auto downloads to listen first thing every Monday morning because you need. That conspiracy shit to really get you fired up for the work week. Yeah, give you something to talk about with your goddamn coworkers. Yeah, and then they're going to be like... Especially Jane over by the goddamn coffee maker, that yeah. dumb bitch. Don't they be like, don't invite him to the fucking barbecue. <laughs> yeah. He's going to be over there like, don't eat the burgers, they put <laughs> shit in it. <laughs> yeah, and if you're like us, you'd be like, good, I didn't want to fucking go anyways, you psychopaths. Yeah, just chill at home. Anyway. Right. Yeah. That's almost going through that door like Kramer. Thank you to all of the Patreon members that help keep this podcast a reality. We are grateful for your continued support. If you haven't yet become a member and would like to support us, head to our Patreon. Or if you're feeling classy, check out our merch selection on our website to visually show your support to your friends and family. Mm -hmm. And to support us. Drop us a five-star rating and write us a review. Tell us what you love and how you are enjoying the show. Share us on your socials. Tell your crypt-loving friends and family about us. Subscribe, hit the bell, and like the videos on YouTube. Bing! This all helps us to grow and bring you more great content for you to enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. Join us next Monday for our next incredible episode. You may write us, rate us, review us, but remember to always stay curious, be vigilant, and don't touch my Sasquatch. Yeah. Oh. Oh. You're hanging out with the Makuxi in the inner earth? All right. He can't talk to you right now. He's hanging out with the Makuxi. Peace. See ya. <laughs> Dope. <laughs>
great. <laughs> yeah, the- I didn't want to wait. <laughs> yeah. Accidents to the hands. <laughs> Josh's segment. I'm going to flip it around. I'm going to tr- screw the bottom into the top of the sides. So you're just like cranking away four fucking screws, pissing, moaning, cussing up a storm at 12 yeah. at night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you on Google Earth? I'm on Google Maps. Okay. That's the problem. Okay, cut, cut, cut. I forgot. It was... I was struggling with it. Was, <laughs> yeah, I panicked. I my baby. All my troubles seem so far away. Uh, you were touching your thing. <laughs> yeah, let's drink that. <laughs> Fucking idiot. Bug off and went, and he went, ah! <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, that happened. <laughs> oh. But in more recent times, I said everything there. Ooh. The Batman shit. Expert level transitions. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> <laughs> you coughing into that.